Hello everyone and welcome back to the latest rendition of Comic Book Catch-Up. This is the show where I take a book that came out relatively recent, just one that I was very curious about or wanted to read that I never really got the chance to when it first came out, and now I'm able to go back and look at it because we got trades and stuff. And today's book is... Boom. Prez by Mark Russell. If you guys don't know anything about this channel or know me at all, I dropped the book, whoops. If you guys don't know anything about me, I am a huge fan of Mark Russell's work. I think I first got on, I first figured out who he was because I read Exit Stage Left, The Snagglepuss Chronicles, the book that just like kind of ignited my spark to go deeper into this guy's writing. Then I read The Flintstones, which was such a great political satire, going in that angle and everything. I haven't read The Wonder Twins yet, I still want to read those and pick those up. Then I read Billionaire Island, which is currently going on. I absolutely love it, you can check out all my reviews of Billionaire Island on this channel. And then he did Second Coming, well it's not my favorite book, I still enjoyed it a lot. And I read some of his Batman stuff for Gotham Knights really cool I, this guy's great and i love all of his work so prez i was like i want to read this so bad where can i find it i haven't been able to find it in any comic shops i just went to like a small bookstore when i was visiting a city the other week and i saw it there and i'm like i gotta pick it up it was on sale so it's volume one i think there's more volumes of the book but it was really good so here's the basic premise of prez the world is in like i think it's 2036 they say and politicians aren't cool anymore, you know, because politicians are cool now, but we are doing all of our voting and all of our systems on like a Twitter format and online format, and it's all about the likes and the clicks and the followers and everything you have, and our Democrat and Republican party leaders. Guys, I'm sorry if I say some stuff wrong, I am not an American, so I don't know the American political system all that well, I just want to point that out too. They are kind of these guys that nobody really likes. Like, they, they are so clearly in the position that they are in. One is so clearly Republican, one is so clearly Democratic. And it's like, okay, we need a third pan we need a third party candidate who can come in here and do something cool. So, it's just some random guy online is like, well, what about this corn dog girl? You know, she seems kind of funny. And then slowly as the story progresses, she builds up enough support from all the the house from all the states and they all choose her to be president so this 19 year old girl named beth is now the president of the united states and that's a great satire because i mean young people kind of like i don't i don't know really like young people i think have like this disdain when it comes to certain people that you can vote for or like have in like your party for whatever party you choose like democrat or republican and having a young person, I think it's just, what a great idea, because I think it's 35 you have to be to become a president or like be able to run for it, I don't know. And having a young person, I think that makes for a great story. And wow, did this book get topical in ways I wasn't expecting. I think this came out around like 2010 to 2011 in that era. If I'm wrong, please let me know, guys. But wow, this book was surprisingly political. I, don't, I say surprisingly political, like it's not supposed to be political, it's about the president. But just the angles it took for a lot of places. First off, the idea, Mark Russell deals with this a lot in his work. It's this idea of the big corporation controlling the world. Because I wholeheartedly believe that too. I think being able to make fun of that stuff is like the key influence of everything happening in Billionaire Island. And it is in here too. But the big corporation owners in this book, they all hide their identity with like these holographic faces of a logo. So you got the pharma dog who's like a dog holding a syringe. You got the corn guy who's just like a piece of corn. And it's like all these things that are the big global conglomerates but they're personified by a guy in a suit wearing a holographic face of their logo and i'm like that's a great way to conceal identity and it makes a lot of sense in the future that these people would want to hide themselves when they could be berated by everyone so i thought that was really cool i also like the angle in this book too that beth i think her name is bethany ross if i'm not mistaken something like that she is like the first candidate in history who doesn't have an agenda and doesn't have any favors that she owes out to people so she can pick her cabinet from whoever she wants she doesn't have to worry about like oh i can't get support from this guy because i i helped him with this thing now he has to help me back you know you don't have any of that going on with Beth here, so she's like, I'll just pick who I think deserves the job. Not the asshole, not the misogynist, not any of these people, just who's right for the job in today's climate, and I think that is very cool stuff. 
And there's like a lot of just smaller ideas in here too. Kind of like how there was like a social media war and Twitter's the one that emerged on top. I thought that was really funny. Like this book, Mark Russell is such a talented writer. I, I really do love his stuff and the way he handles every situation I think is amazing and fantastic. I like the idea here too that Beth is like, you know what? We should take an apology tour and just go to every country and just say, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> like... That is such a funny idea. And then he's got someone like, oh, that's really appreciated. Then you're just like, some countries are like, eh, it's a little too late for an apology, but whatever. That's cool. Like, it's just such a funny and interesting book and a lot of great ideas. Like, there are two main themes here in this, like, the first volume. I think it went on more. This is issues one to six we are talking about. There's two, like, main things we just talk about in this book. The first one is this idea of militarization and using kind of like these, uh, I want to say like a software, or how do you describe it? Like a remote controlled like machine to take out terrorism or attacks and stuff like that, which is something that I'm pretty sure is being talked about in the military today. This idea that we can control a machine or a device overseas from sitting here in America, just using like a joystick and a console, and suddenly the disillusion or we're, we're, we're losing the humanity of war and I, I mean there's whole articles that could talk about that stuff I don't want to get too much into it but this is the idea that you lose part of the humanity and you lose part of your or the idea of helping people when you're not in the actual situation because if it's just like a big bulky mecha machine that has guns that could kill people while you're sitting on a couch you're losing a part of the humanity of war and that's like a big angle in this story too is this idea like we follow these like two guys who control the big mech suits and they are kind of assholes because they're not they don't care or like understand what's really happening there maybe they burn down the wrong village maybe they shoot a kid that they think is somebody who's like a terrorist or an enemy, but it's just a kid running down the street. They don't have the humanity or the ideas there. They're just seeing what's on the screen in front of them. What a great and terrifying angle to play in here because that's being talked about now and it's scary as fuck. Like that is a big deal. I think for a lot of people it's like, as soon as it comes to the time where we could just deploy a machine or a device and we don't actually have to leave our house to control it, we are taking something out of the military and, and the humanity of it all where suddenly, it's no longer just you are making choices in the moment. You're playing a game and none of it matters. You're, you're not having the lasting consequences and you're not feeling the emotions that you could feel if you're actually there. And our 19 year old, she's like, we got to get rid of this shit. Like, this is a bad idea. So we are disbanding this operation and getting rid of it. I think that's really cool too. Great idea. Because yeah, a young person's going to be like, this is a stupid fucking idea. We probably shouldn't do it because it's not good at all. So we should just not. There's also this character in the book, too, who is kind of supposed to be like this battle machine, this like hardened creature, like the, uh, I can't remember, what what's the name of that machine from Robocop, the ED-207 or something? It's supposed to be like that, and it's starting to like, be, it wants to be this like killing machine, but suddenly it starts to gain consciousness and understand itself, and it's like, I don't want to be a killing machine anymore. I And it runs away from the government, and it's just kind of... <laughs> goes to like a church, figures itself out, goes to a support group, chooses the identity of Tina, and suddenly it becomes a protector of these people when it's being hunted. And then it slowly just builds up to it becoming, well, Tina becomes the security guard for Beth. And I, I love that a lot. It's such a funny and fascinating angle for this story in this book. I love it a lot. And that's like my thing about Mark Russell too. You know, the guy's a satirist. He's worked on a bunch of satirical stuff before this, but he just knows how to capture exactly what needs to be said for what's going on around it and i like that a lot because everything that's happening with you know like the big corporations with the government with the all that stuff in this book that makes sense especially when it comes to what's happening with beth i thought that's very fascinating too the other big thing in this book is so relevant today that i actually just i had to take a moment while i'm reading it. i'm like you gotta be kidding me like how how did Okay, so there is this flu going around called the cat flu, and you get it from stray cats or just any day household cats, right? I said, I, I said that like they're appliances or something, I don't know. But the flu kills Beth's father, and that's why she's got like, we gotta find a vaccine and a cure for this. And in comes this organization that could potentially cure it. 
but they don't want to go into testing yet because in the case that their testing doesn't work, the public's going to see them as less than, so they're not going to buy their product. So they got to wait till the like they have a vaccine that actually works to sell that for the cat flu instead of just doing like making themselves look bad. Does that sound relevant? Does it sound like there's a pandemic going on in both this book and the real world that maybe big pharmacies know about and are trying hard to do, but maybe there's somebody stopping them from actually finding a cure? I might be leaning into the real world stuff, but in the book, that's what's happening. Whoa, it's so, it's just so weird and so realistic, especially in 2020 when I'm reading this. I'm just like, wow, there's a pandemic happening in two places here. They are being handled very poorly in one, and you can't really get the cure yet because no one's willing to do the work to do it. One of the other things with these corporations doing the cure is like, I would like to like legally patent the ability where I can own someone's organs and own them. So it's like a different form of owning somebody that they could use and they, they'll get the vaccine out. It's legally, you're just like, you can own somebody and have them alive. And I'm like, what? You, how can you own DNA of someone? That is so weird and confusing. It's scary as hell. And this book just handles it in such a funny and weird way. I love this book a lot. So how do we handle the cat flu just for the moment being? We just send all the cats to an island. Because <laughs> we can't do anything else right now. I love this book. Like, I I don't know, guys. This was just perfect in every regards of the word. I think a lot of people will enjoy it. And it's going to a bunch of angles. I don't think people would be expecting in 2020 and it's really weird to see how they handle things that are going on in our world today absolutely worth reading this was a really fun book to pick up and i hope a lot of people take my review here and they're like i'd like to check this book out myself so if i can find a link on amazon maybe i'll put it in the description below for you guys to check out but if not find it somewhere and you'll enjoy it heavily so thank you guys so much for watching this video be sure to like and subscribe to the channel as always you can check me out on instagram patreon twitter all that good stuff and if you got any books you'd like to see me talk about on comic book catch up please let me know because i'm very curious i'll see you in the next video have fun stay safe good luck